Hi guys, hello everyone. Uh, good morning for me. It's 11.30 here in California. Uh, good afternoon for most of the East Coast of the USA and also South America. Good evening, good night in Europe. Daniel Spatz from California again. Once again, another live. Today is a special live. For, uh, I normally interview a, a, teeny, a tennis, you know, teachers, uh, coaches. Today I have a special guest, a former NBA player, um, basketball player. For I, I love sports, as you know. I'm a tennis coach, but I love soccer. I love basketball. I love sports in general. So t talking to me with different play sports figures uh, makes me feel very satisfied, very happy, very excited, and, and really feel that I'm learning. I'm learning a lot from, you know, coaches, players. So it's, it's good to listen, to be open-minded, and to sometimes get out of the comfort zone. So I'm going to receive, I'm going to give a welcome to Landry Fields. Uh, Landry played for uh, Stanford University. Uh, by the way, thanks to my son, Renzo Maggi, he made it possible this connection with Landry. They are very close friends from high school here in Long Beach, California. As I said before, Landry played for Stanford University, then uh, played for New York Knicks and Toronto Raptors. Now is a general assistant manager of the Atlanta Hawks. So it's a privilege to have Landry in this life. And I hope you enjoy it. And we're gonna learn a little bit about the NBA, okay? Thank you so much. I'm gonna give uh, Landry the, the welcome. And hopefully he's, um, He's there, so let me just enable Landry. Are you are you there? Because I'm I'm trying to send send me the request. If you join my live uh, on your phone, you can see send request uh, to be live with Daniel Spatz. So you send me the request, and I will uh, accept you. Uh, yeah, you you are not uh, yet. Uh, I was trying to uh, get you into the the. Um, yeah, let me send me the request when you you can go off and come back again, and you will see immediately as soon as you join my video, my live, you will see a, a little sign about send request to be live with Daniel. So I think is the easiest easiest way. So I hope you are enjoying it, the, all the interviews, most of them in Spanish, but um, it's good to, to practice English as well. So uh, as I said before, we have to be open-minded and willing to learn uh, new things from different people, different fields, not just tennis in my particular case. So... I'm waiting for, see if we can bring uh, Landry. Let me just, I'm waiting. I already sent connecting. Hey, Landry. Hey, hold on. Good morning for me. Good afternoon for you, buddy. How are you doing? I'm, I'm well, I'm well. Hang on, let me make sure I got this right. Okay. Yeah, you did it. You did, I told you, it's easier than playing LeBron or all those guys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I was getting a little, it's getting a little dicey there for a second. Wasn't I, sure I, 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 I felt the same. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're very busy now. Uh, yeah. So uh, thank you, Landry, for this uh, time that you're considering in this uh, interview. Absolutely. I mean, as you mentioned, Renzo is my guy. Love that dude. So happy, happy to be here. Wow, nice, nice. Yeah, you guys play uh, high school, right? Los Alamitos. We did. We played high school. And if it wasn't for Renzo, we would not be champions of our CIF league in Southern California. And that, that is factual. Some of the games that, that he was a part of, um, he made some big time plays. So uh, I am happy to say that I am grateful for his contributions, not only as a friend, but as a player on the court. <laughs> wow, what a compliment. Oh the yeah, so. he's gonna be so happy, so so uh, uh, excited about it, listening to that. So Landry, where are you? You're in Atlanta, right? Working for the Atlanta Hawks. Yes, I'm in Atlanta right now. Okay, okay, and 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 okay. I will ask you later about what your role exactly. What do you do for people who who don't know? But sure. growing up, Landry, uh, we, we I'm you know as you know I'm a tennis coach, but I love sports. 
Yeah. Um, and I always love basketball. You know, my country, Argentina, is, is a very big, big, big fan of basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we have great tradition. So we follow NBA. I mean, we are crazy about NBA games. Of course. Uh, so um, growing up, Landry, uh, was really your dream to play NBA when you were a kid, a teenager? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I grew up uh, in Southern California, in Long Beach and um basketball my dad played basketball my mom played basketball and uh, at a very young age i definitely fell in love with the game but it wasn't my only sport i also played baseball i enjoyed surfing and skateboarding even to this day you know if i can get out and, and skateboard or surf somewhere i will um you know especially in in these times of covid it's hard to do team sports Uh, but uh, I, I absolutely love the game. And obviously, as you had said before, um, it, it's been of great service to me and something that I was continuously working at and, and hammering away at. And, you know, it, it's landed me in the, my current position here in Atlanta. Wow. So, you, you it, it, Andre, when uh, as a tennis player, you realize you can make it or not when you are 14, 15, 16. Uh, mm basketball wise when you really see when when is the age that you really see you feel okay i can make it i have some chances one day to make an nba wow it's, uh, it's a good question there's it, it really comes about it at different times i think for i can speak to my experience going into my let's see my senior year of college before that i'd always dreamed and, and was working to become a basketball nba player Uh, going into my senior year, I think was the time where I really felt like it was definitely a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, my body had matured. My game had gotten a lot better. Uh, and just playing against other top tier, you know, athletes at that point in time who were projected to also be NBA players. Um, it gave me a great deal of confidence, kind of at least giving me not certainty, but, you know, probability of, of making the NBA. And that came later. But for a lot of some, – some guys now, like even in scouting, some of these guys you can look at at 15 years old, similar to, to tennis, 16, and you're like, if they just continue to develop, like those are going to be NBA guys. Mm. And then on the opposite side of that, there are certain guys that it takes, you know, added mm. years to actually become an NBA player. It's beyond college. They have to go overseas or they play mm -hmm. in uh, the G League, which is the developmental league in the NBA, and, they, and that's their pathway to actually making it to the, to the NBA. So – It's a, it's a wide range of ages and um, in time periods, but uh, uh, that's a good thing. It, it doesn't close the door too early on certain people. Wonderful. Uh, what, what is the difference between high school basketball and college basketball? Uh, At least uh, based on your experience, right? Because you played yeah. for Stanford, right? Stanford University. I did, yes. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's, it's like any, it's like any level. It's, um, if you go from, you know, as a you know, elementary school player and you start playing with middle schoolers, the game becomes faster. Guys are, you know, your teammates are bigger, they're stronger guys you're playing against are, are just better, you know? So you take that to high school and then to college, uh, it's a similar thing. And usually your team is made up of guys that were probably some of the better players on their high school team. And now you're mixing them in together on a new team. Uh, going against other players that have actually been in college for, you know, X number of years. And now you just have to take a, you have to take it a step up. Guys are smarter, they're faster, mm. uh, they're stronger. And, uh, you know, especially in like my case, it was also, you know, working into Stanford's academics and mm. trying to balance and bring harmony, not only to what I was doing on the court, but everything in terms of academics in school. So there was definitely uh, a growth period of my life there that happened pretty quickly or had to happen pretty quickly. Uh, so I would say that those are probably the biggest differences. Wonderful. And then of course, the million dollar question, college NBA. Oh man. How, yeah. How hard, because it's like tennis, we have different levels. Yeah. The lowest entry level for professionals is called futures. Yep. When you, you don't have a point, you don't have anything. Then we play challengers and then ATP and then grand slams and so. Yeah. Uh, But NBA is like Grand Slam, you know, the big league. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, as a basketball player, what, uh, what, do you, what, what is the main difference, college basketball, mm -hmm. NBA? 
So there's two things. Um, I'd say the first thing is kind of what I mentioned before. It's a difference in now guys who were pretty much the best on their college team now are integrating into a team where usually those guys that are on those teams are, are some of the best in the world. You know, the NBA is, um, you know, probably objectively the best basketball league in the world. Yeah. And it's pulling not just from the collegiate ranks, but the best players in, in Argentina, in Italy, in mm. Spain, you know, all these big time countries where they have incredible basketball players as well. So it's, it opens up the amount of players to pull from to then add on to uh, these NBA teams. And being on the scouting side of things now in the front office, I actually can see how much more difficult it is because the amount of players that we actually you know comb through learn the backgrounds do deep dives in terms of their game mm. uh is much bigger than what you would think as a college player or you know an overseas guy like you, you're kind of it's kind of mind-blowing how many players you have to actually <laughs> scout and, and work through and figure out all the details on to see if you want to bring them onto your team. So it, it is definitely incredibly difficult. There's a lot of things that have to go your way uh, in order for you to make it to the NBA. Uh, so don't allow me to sit up here and tell you like, yeah, I was a shoe in to be an NBA player because, you know, I could only control how hard I was working at my game and, and how I was excelling as a player, but there were still a lot of things that had to go my way in order for me to actually become an NBA player. Wonderful. What, what qualities, Andre, uh, a, 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 when you see a young player, besides the athletic ability, uh, uh, skills to play basketball, sure. what else you look for, a potential NBA candidate, you know, somebody you spot, you say, that kid is going to make it. When someone saw Manu Ginobili, right? Yeah. In Italy, yeah. whoever saw Manu saw something special, right? Yeah. He, he was hard for him at the beginning to make it in Spurs with Paul yeah. Richard. But, but what do you see? What, do you, what qualities a kid mm -hmm. should uh, show, right? Right, right. Well, with, with Manu, of course, like at that point in time, he had great hair. He doesn't have it now, but he had incredible <laughs> hair back then. Yeah. And I'm sure that was a factor into their decision making. Uh, no, what you just said, I mean, it starts with, you know, the skill set and you're going and you're looking at a player. And of course, like you, you have the, what, what we call passes the eye test, you know, he, he may be long, athletic, built, um, and the talent and the skills that he has as a player, of course, everything you just mentioned are absolutely true. Um, what, something that goes along with it that I think a lot of organizations and scouts will look for because basketball is a team game, um, you, you want to find those qualities that are going to help in building relationships and making sure that you're a quality teammate, you know, because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, it's not one on five, it's five on five. And you have to learn how to, you know, be in harmony with four other teammates on the court at one time. So you need some of those emotional IQ skills to actually be uh, a really good basketball player. You know, you want a level of humility, Uh, you want to obviously be hardworking, uh, empathetic, honest, like all these core intangibles that go into building up a really good team are, are, are probably some things that are not as in, in, in the scope of vision as what you would see just looking at a player and what they can do physically. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, qualities for you, for Landry Fields, for a good coach that you say he is a good coach, a great coach. Yeah. What qualities you, you define in a, in a good coach? Oh, another, another good question. I think something for certain coaches, coaches are obviously seen as, you know, they're leaders, they're the quote-unquote experts. Um, they're, they're kind of ahead in knowledge of, of a lot of players. I think a really – good quality about a coach is their willingness to continue to learn themselves. Um, not falling into sort of this curse of, of expertise that some may find themselves in, but they themselves are continuously learning and trying to upgrade their own skills in order to then, you know, bring it to the team to bring it to certain players. So there's no limitation on how much a player can grow while they're under that certain coaches, um, you know, tutelage and, and whatnot. So having a growth mindset, I think mm -hmm. is, is very important for coaches. Um, 
their ability, to, just like as a player, their ability to have great, you know, interpersonal skills, those intangibles um, are definitely needed because you have to talk with players and there's different personalities and different ways of managing those personalities along with the, the skill set that guys have. Uh, you know, great coaches are great listeners um, and they're great at asking really good questions. You know, they, they, they grow players in a way that's not overpowering, but in a way to help players um, kind of see what, are their blind spots and not necessarily, you know, you know, uh, hold them, hold, hold, what am I trying to say here? They don't necessarily criticize them too much for it. They just show them like, Hey, here's an area of growth. Um, but they have to have a level of competency in the first place in order to do that. Wonderful. Wonderful. W which coach or coaches has been really instrumental in your career, Landry? Uh, I'm going to give you the political answer, but it is very true. I have learned something from every single coach that I've ever been a part of. Um, from my younger days uh, at the YMCA, you know, those, those coaches just learning the basic skills and fundamentals of basketball. Sorry, uh, Landry, I don't want to interrupt. Do you remember the name of your first coach ever? I do, yeah, yeah. So my, my very first coach, his name is A.C. Diaz. He was on my AAU, he's an AAU coach. And he yeah. was, he is, he's still around. He's still coaching the same team. It's amazing. Wonderful. Um, he was very high on some of the intangibles that you bring to the game. Um, but he also was teaching us the fundamentals. And I, what I loved about his coaching is he always had us playing against higher, higher grades and, and players that were older than us. And even though we always got our butts kicked, he always told us, like, look, he said, look, you're not going to grow as players unless you're playing against the best. So mm -hmm. we'd get blown out in these games and and we would really it would suck and parents were really upset with it but at the end of the day um players on that team they went on and, and played um uh, you know at, at high levels of, of of basketball uh so he was instrumental my high school coach russ may probably my favorite coach of all time i've learned so much from him um just his ability to empower me as a player and take care of me and show that level of care uh, something to this day that 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 I hold very near and dear to my heart, and something that I would love to implement, just as I'm talking with with different individuals in, in the world, um, you know, and going on to college where I first with first was with Trent Johnson, who was kind of like a no BS type, just very direct in his in his coaching, and so I had to had to sh you know relearn a different skill set in order to find my way and navigate that space with him as our head coach. And, you know, halfway through my college career, a new coach came in and, uh, and Johnny Dawkins, who came over from Duke, and he was an NBA player himself. So just the level of skill and knowledge that he had as a former NBA player was very helpful for me as I continued to progress as a player. I mean, all the way up to my, my coaches of the NBA. First year was Mike D'Antoni and Mike Woodson. Mm. Um, you know, D'Antoni, an unbelievable offensive-minded mm. coach, uh, and just his vision for the game I, I, I think is spectacular. Uh, Mike Woodson, who's kind of like an old head OG, who, who has so much wisdom uh, and knowledge of the game, implementing that on me as a, as a young rookie. And then I went to Toronto and was under Dwayne Casey. And mm -hmm. Dwayne Casey was a very defensive-minded coach. So with all of those coaches, they started to round me out as a player from the offensive end to the defensive end to who I am as a person and how I'm getting along with my teammates. So I, I say, like, I pulled something from every single one of those coaches. Wonderful. By the way, if my wife, Bettina... Uh, say hi, Renzo's mom. So. Oh, nice. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so, yeah. Hi. Hi. She's saying hi. She's hey. uh, She's joined the, the video. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is amazing. Uh, listening to, uh, I, I really admire, you know, big figures, uh, sports people, uh, because I know how difficult it is to become a professional athlete, Landry, in mm -hmm. all fields, any endeavor, any field, any arena. So it's amazing uh, what you're saying. Um, tell, tell us uh, stories about, you know, playing against, you know, big names, LeBron, Kobe, uh, Tim Duncan, uh, yeah. anyone, whatever, whoever you want to mention with stories, how, how, it, how is it like to play to having these guys in front, in front of you, toe to toe, you know? I'll start with my absolute favorite NBA player of all time. Growing up in Los Angeles area, you know, Kobe Bryant was, mm. was my idol. Um, very, very saddened at, at his tragic mm. death. Yeah. You know, that hit, that hit me and it hit a lot of people very, very hard. 
uh, for him and me stepping into the NBA, getting to play against him uh, was just an incredible experience for me. It was the first, it was probably the only player when I stepped on the court where I kind of had like those, like my eyes wide open, like, oh my gosh, that's, that's Kobe Bryant right there. <laughs> so mm. it took me a few times to get up and down the floor um, to kind of get acclimated into the game and, and kind of recalibrate a little bit there. Um, but it was just, it was, it was perfect. Like I was able to start on him and guard him. You know, he's the only, he's the only player that I have a picture of in my office. I don't have the picture here cause I'm, no. I've moved. It's in my office back home in California. Um, but it's me guarding him. And I just wow. think that's so fitting because you know, the, you, you only get to have a picture of you guarding the mama, not the other way around. Um, so he was absolutely my, my favorite player. And a player who, when I did get to play against, it was a really special moment for me. And of course, playing against you know the LeBrons and the Tim Duncans and mm. you know Manu Ginobili when he was in San Antonio. I mean, unbelievable players. And you just see when you're on the court, just how much further you'd have to go to excel as a player to reach those levels uh, of of skill. So um, it truly special to play against some of those guys. It, 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 you know, I talk to soccer players who play with against Maradona, Messi, uh, or with them, uh, and they said they were special. They are different. They do things when you least expect it. They come up with something magic. Yeah, this is what Kobe or these guys made you feel in 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 those matches, uh, Landry. Oh, I mean, something. oh yeah, okay. Yeah, they're they're magicians. They're wizards out there. Like you. Uh -huh. you you often scratch your head. You're like, gosh, like you can be that good at this game. Like there's so much potential baked into this sport that you can actually be that good at something. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's truly remarkable how, <laughs> how far they can excel. You often, you often wonder is like, could you even, do you even have the capacity to, to, to excel to that level? You know, I don't know. I, I, I've never, I never reached that point. Um, and I won't, I'm not playing anymore, but still you kind of just go, you step back and there's this level of awe, And, and mystery that kind of creates this mystique around players like that, which I, I love. I think it's great for any sport. And I would imagine it's, it's similar with some of the greats in tennis as well. Yeah, Federer, when you play Nadal, those guys. You like, you like tennis? Uh, well, no, I'm, I mean, like, I, so I know, like... Renzo, Renzo was a very good tennis player. Also. Oh, Ren Renzo was fantastic. He's also great at ping pong. He was kicking my butt all day with that. But, like, those, <laughs> yeah. top, those top tier tennis players, you know, it doesn't, for somebody who doesn't, necessarily gravitate towards that that sport you still they're so great at it that somebody like me can come in and be like wow that dude is fantastic at tennis like that's how you know how good they they are because it doesn't matter what sport you follow you go and look at that and you're like yeah there's something special about that dude exactly so so and it, it, besides uh, uh, you like to play besides ping pong any other sport i mean uh, or when you were growing up uh, you play soccer baseball football something Besides basketball, aside basketball or just basketball? It was it was basketball, okay. and baseball, and skateboarding and surfing. Like I, I'm a Cali kid at heart. Yeah, so exactly. I couldn't get away from the skateboarding and surfing. <laughs> wow, wow! And uh, you have kids, right? You have uh, children. I do. Uh, I have two boys, seven and four. And how about basketball? Do we'll they... we'll see. A lot of energy in that household. My youngest, who's four, he actually wanted to have a Michael Jordan birthday party. So we threw him a Michael Jordan birthday party because wow. he fell in love with Michael Jordan from watching Space Jam. So we'll see where that goes. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Uh, so maybe we'll see an another field uh, in the future in NBA. <laughs> we'll see. Right now we're just, you never we're know. just working. <laughs> right now we're just working on making beds and being yeah. respectful and kind to your siblings. You know, we'll get there. <laughs> exactly. So, so, um, You know, I want to come up with a couple more questions before I sure. let you go, because I know you're very busy and I hope you're having a good time. But teach me. I want to learn more. Now I have you, one, one player. I don't want to see former player because you're going to be player your whole life in your heart. <laughs> uh, I talked to the guy who scored the goal in, in soccer in the finals, World Cup in Mexico, 1986 for Argentina. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't call me former player. He's 60 years old. He said, I will die being a soccer player. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, and I also talked to a former number one in tennis, and he said the same. Call yeah. me tennis player. I've been tennis <laughs> player my whole life. So you're going to be basketball player your whole life. So sure, I'll take me, it. I heard, I read, 
defense wins big tournaments, great defense. It does, is that true? I mean, in basketball and in, in NBA, big de of course, you have to score. But uh, yeah, yeah. Is that true that defense wins? Uh, it's it's a it's a bit of both you know okay you, you got to have both i think if you look at the the previous championship teams in the nba they were more than likely and i don't have the statistics right in front of me um and i hope analytics wouldn't crush me for this but i'm pretty sure they were probably top 10 in the league in both offense and defense you know you got to be able to put up points but you have to be able to stop the other team too so um both are very important which is why i absolutely love this sport because Uh, you do have to factor in both. You gotta, you have to make sure to address both if you're trying to build out a roster. Okay. And how about the last quarter? I mean, the last quarter I heard is the most important quarter. Is that true? The last quarter? You know, I, I don't know. That's another, it's a, it's a good question because, um, you know, at that point in time, there's not as many possessions left in the game. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have like more of a narrow, narrow window to actually, win a game whereas if you're making you know mistakes in the first quarter you can kind of make those up over time but you know like you know it, it basketball is a game of, of a lot of different possessions and a lot of different actions and it could be like death by a thousand wounds you know if you're you know turning the ball over 10 times in the first quarter and then don't do the rest of the game but you lose by one point you're going to kick yourself for not mm. having those possessions back you know so every possession Uh, is very important and i think any team and coach would understand especially like in the playoffs uh when those games really do mean something every possession it, it, it they, they count and you'd love to have those possessions back that, that you had a turnover or you made a faulty play wonderful and the last uh, question uh, landry and once again thank you so much for your time it yeah. means a lot to me um how do you see the immediate future of the nba due to the kobe situation because you know we have soccer matches going on no fans tennis big tournaments with no fans uh nba uh, how do you see we are here in the usa going through difficult times yeah uh, but uh, how is going to be the next season when how, how do you see the near future mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the 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 nba right Right, right. Well, uh, for all I fans, guess, fans all over the world. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. It, it, it's, it, it's definitely a, a tough moment in time, and I think looking at this, you know, in a very seasonal way, understanding that you know there's cycles of life, and mm. uh, this is this is one of those. And you know, I, I think the NBA has done an incredible job, um, and they're doing an incredible job preparing for this season. I mean, as you look about football you're looking at college basketball right now the games that are being postponed or canceled um nba is trying to avoid at all costs so they're doing a, an incredible job implementing guidelines and health protocols and just trying to make sure that all teams are safe all fans are safe you know they're not going to bring anybody back into the arena uh where it's going to put anybody in danger um the level of care that they have is um It's great. It's super encouraging to be part of. It's definitely not a season that is, you know, like the former ones. And you'd love to have it be, quote unquote, normalized. Uh, but this is just the reality that we find ourselves in. So uh, we can't control it. So how do we grow in it? And how do we navigate this space in the best way possible? And, you know, I have a lot of hope uh, and encouragement that, you know, we'll, we'll get through this. You know, there'll be a vaccine or something will happen where we're able to have some mm -hmm. bit of normalcy or at least what it was in the past. But I think you know, this gives us a chance to, to be very creative, to find different ways um, to kind of do some introspection, not only as human beings, but as organizations and as groups and be like, okay, like this is the time for us to build out from here and learn something new and maybe grow for the ultimate, you know, ultimate good of, of this basketball and the, of, of this sport um, and as individuals. So all about a perspective on, on these things and what paradigms we're living in um very difficult don't don't allow me to to say that you know this isn't a very hard time for certain individuals because it is um yet paradoxically how can we how can we grow and, and what are the positives that can come from it wonderful landry so uh i wish you the best in atlanta a, a beautiful city beautiful city and I, i i've been there several times we lived a few years in south carolina so i was driving to atlanta Uh, uh, and it's amazing, amazing city. So 
I hope you're having a good time in the organization at Atlanta Hawks. It's, it's been great so far. I absolutely love it. Incredible care here in Atlanta. So um, I appreciate you having me on. And when you see Renzo, give him a big fat hug for me. I love that dude. I will. I will. Thank you so much, uh, Landry. Stay healthy. Uh, and I'm going to be Atlanta fan now because of you. Eh? I'm going to gotcha. follow you guys. This is all part of the recruiting process. <laughs> There you go. Thank you so much. All right. uh, God bless you, 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 your family, and stay healthy, buddy. Thank Take care. You, you too. Take Thank care. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.